Uh, right, we might as well get started. Although it does look like more ACF team members than non-ACF team members, but that's all. It's good. often the case for these uh, these you know, question answer ones because folks only come if they've got something specific. Yeah, the top the top specific topics do help. Um, but yeah, uh, where are we? Okay, well, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. These are our open office hours that we do every two weeks. We do record them, so don't need to turn up necessarily every every week, every time if you can't. Um, and we'll put them on the WP Engine Builders YouTube channel. So I am uh, Ian Paulson, the product manager. We've got Liam Gladdy, Matt Shaw, who are engineers on the team. We've got Damon Cook from DevRail, Brian Hardy, who's on the ACF team as well, and Mike Davey, who is our content person. And we've got bots as well. Sorry, Andrew Bots is from the engineering team as well, which is great. Uh, what have we? Yeah, let's go over some things that have happened recently. Just as a quick whistle stop update, we released uh, ACF 6.2.1, which was on the 7th of September. Not, not a huge release, sort of bug fix release, a couple of, couple of improvements and fixes that we've made to the options page. Uh, UI functionality that we added in 6.2 for ACF Pro, um, the ability to create options pages and make them child pages of WordPress or other non-ACF option pages, menu items in the menu. So you could create a child page and put it under the tools page or under another custom post type. Uh, and you can also control the, the, um, the position of the menu for child pages as well. That's some things that we just didn't do when we did release 6.2 uh and probably the other only major call out from that release was the uh for when you create a post type you now have a, a label that you can configure the or change the add title sort of placeholder that appears when you're creating a new post uh, and that was something that custom post type ui had and we didn't include in the 6.1 release um so it's kind of screwing with people's import from cpt ui uh, and quite a few people had requested the same feature so we've, we've added that in and the cpt ui import now works kind of seamlessly which is good uh we if you are a pro customer you would have probably seen 6.2.1.1 which was uh, a bug fix uh that came quite soon after 621 uh you there was an error happening if you had disabled the options page functionality with a filter uh, and then and viewed uh, the admin pages so that was a that was a quick fix to make sure those folks weren't affected for too long um but we don't often do that which is kind of good because i don't think we've ever gone to four four things in the version number um and what else yeah so we also published the results of our survey which i think we were saying we were going to do soon uh, and that happened uh maybe a week or so ago so if you haven't had time to check that out, this is the annual survey that we ran in May of uh, this year. It was the first time we've ever done a survey for ACF uh, and we're gonna do it every year. And it will be really interesting to see how the results change year on year. We asked a bunch of questions about how uh, people are using ACF and what type of WordPress sites they're building. Um, we asked them sort of more in depth questions around usage of ACF, what type of fields they typically used all the time. Um, we we gauged some really good information about um, how long people have been using ACF and what kind of um, companies they work for in terms of are they agency, are they a freelancer, do they work for brands. Um, really good responses in terms of, we should be sharing the screen, but the, the um, just do that now. So this is the survey results. We had over 2,000 people. Uh, take out take the survey which was great and and if any of you did then thank you we really appreciate that um some nice uh statistics around how important acf is to people's workflow um how people are satisfied with the support that they've got a load of people building blocks with acf blocks um and a really interesting split around people building acf sites with classic wordpress and classic themes i guess um, quite a large number working with hybrid themes, building full site editing, block themes, um, and, and similarly, quite a large number of people building sites with page builders. So we, we've got a load of data, and is, this um, results post is quite a good 
place to see the visualization but we do break it down and go into some of the numbers so if you're interested in in the slice of uh acf and wordpress usage out there it's quite a lot of data on that page um and as i said we'll do it every year so it'd be really nice to kind of see how that the trends change and the usage of the block editor changes um uh, and, and some other things yeah you can see local is a very popular way of uh, building local wordpress sites But I think we've we have got nothing in terms of a topic plan this time. So we've got the Q and A running as usual, uh, or you can use the chat on the uh, inside Zoom. But there's not many people here, so please just feel free to unmute, ask a question. You can use the reactions in Zoom to raise a hand if you want to be super polite. But I think I don't think we're, no one's anyone's going to talk over each other. So yeah, we can. We can get started if anyone's got a burning question or just want to share some stuff or any challenges they've had with ACF recently. Or we may need to fill the silence. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have okay, a question. Just... Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, great, Sue. Um, <laughs> so I'm new to ACF and I'm trying to deal with um, using Date Picker and figuring out how to format the results of date picker using generate press do you have any suggestions because ah. you know because it's coming out in its normal you know year 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 month month day day and i would like it to say september 15th 2023 is it generate press is it generate generate press like for blocks or is it at the more yeah yeah Okay, so well, it's, it's the generate press theme with generate blocks, yeah. Right. Okay, I, I'm not too familiar with how that interacts with ACF. Can you basically pick an ACF field? Do you get um, do you get options to change the return format of that field? Um, I don't believe there's options to change it. But what I've read in your documentation is it's it returns the meta field based on what's in the database, how the database stores the date picker date. Right. And that is, has nothing to do as I could, as I understand, it, it has nothing to do with how I picked, I wanted the return date to be. So, you uh, know, when you, um, yeah, when you set up date picker, you know, you can say the input and uh, return and I forget what the first one is um i guess yes yeah, display yeah, format and display return format, format. yes yeah. yes yes so it's not so, respecting the return format that you configure in acf and just well, outputs it, it directly from the database or the yeah yeah, yeah it doesn't seem to that's and so yeah. most third party plugins that extend or you know have their own wrappers around output uh there's a when when you call when you request a, an ACF field, there is an optional parameter that says ignore what it, whatever the user set for return format. I want you know, the raw database format because they are going to handle the transformation of it. So mm -hmm. I suspect that's what Generate Press is doing. And so the specific way to to format it in Generate Press is going to be specific to them rather than uh, our side on ACF. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I uh, know that's not that useful. Uh, I'm trying to trying to click around, <laughs> generate presses documentations here to to see if I can find any kind of hint of how to do it. But they they don't it's, seem to. It sounds like a. It does sound like it's been asked before on the generate yes. press forums. Like, but they yes. just just quickly reading that um the the threads there. It sounds like they are just picking what's in what's stored in the database, but they're telling the person who ever asked it to say you need to store it in the format that you want it to be returned in which isn't ideal because that's why we have a different display format or you know because you might want to store it in in something that's a bit better leap a, a bit better to query rather than yes. looks great from a display point of view um, true, true we don't we don't give you an option to define how things are going to be stored in the database because we have to have that uniformity to be able to handle return formats in the first place so if if that's their response, then yeah, that isn't something you can do. Uh, so okay. it does need to it does need to go back to them to to make it so that you can. 
Yeah, because I think what's probably going on is that when the, the data is stored in like the post meta tables for WordPress and you can use the very direct function of get post meta, which will just get it whatever is stored in the database and it will output it. Whereas ACF mm -hmm. has the helper of get field, which will respect the return formats and does some other things where it's needed. But I suspect generate press isn't using get field and it's just using get post meta. So okay. I think, yeah. Okay. That makes perfect sense to me. I, I, yeah, thank you. Now I, now I know kind of what I need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that helps obviously not a solution, but at least it gets a bit further. Uh, but it helps me understand. And that's, that's the answer. So thank you so much. Perfect. You, you might be able to get around and Matt is going to give me evil eyes for even suggesting this, but you might be able to get around it by using the ACF shortcode because that will bypass generate press and likely let your return format happen uh hold okay okay well that's yeah. something to play with Thanks. yes exactly i'll find the documentation for, for the shortcode now post that in chat for you and F phillips asked in chat i just started to get in depth into acf what are the advanced features controls that as a developer i could take advantage of that aren't obvious what are the topics i need to look into to go from an average acf user to a high level acf dev um yeah damon's ask some questions about like you know any particular features but i i guess the thing that sticks out for me is if you if you install acf you go into the ui and you can define your fields in the ui and that gets stored in the database there are other ways of defining fields you can turn on the local json sync so whenever you define your fields and your field groups in the admin it also gets stored as a json file um, so that you can collaborate with other developers, you can still put it in version control, you can copy that between other sites and use that as your starting point. We also allow you to define fields with PHP. Um, I'll try and we'll post some links to some other things, to some of these things. Um, so you can kind of improve your development workflow with ACF rather than having to start a new site and go, uh, yeah, now I need to define the fields. Or if you've got another developer or multiple developers working together, and you want to give them uh, the kind of the blueprint of the site you're working on, you'll export your field groups to JSON and they can import them and they've got all of the configuration there. And then um, anything else guys that you think of in terms of expert stuff? I mean, ACF Pro is... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess it depends. How, how are you building sites at the moment? What Are you using the classic editor? Are you using the block editor? Or you know something like Elementor or Generate Press. Elementor, okay. Yeah, I think Ele Elementor ACF integrates really well with, but I think there are improvements that we can make to make it easier. But I'd, I'm not sure. Obviously, ACF Pro has the field types, the extra field types, the repeater field, um, the flexible content field. I know Elementor has good support for the repeater field type. I mean, it, it, if you'd have answered that question and said, I, I want to build sites where my clients can use the block editor, then again, ACF Pro has the ACF blocks functionality, which is a very, very easy way of creating custom blocks. Um, but that may not be relevant to you using Elementor, for example. Um, yeah, so there's some, some of those links. I think, yeah, some of the advanced topics, not necessarily like the advanced features or the pro features, but the advanced way, ways of using ACF are around like tooling and around your development workflow. Um, and maybe we could do some, I know Damon, you did, your recent webinar was around creating like a, a plugin that you could use on every site and it kind of got you up and running quickly with some uh, definitions of custom post types or, or field groups. Um, that might be quite good if we can drop the link in there and maybe some other, we could do some other sort of content around these types of leveling up your game as an ACF developer. Oh, great. Philip's already watched it. Brilliant. And I guess in terms of ACF Pro, we've also got the options pages feature, which is pretty, pretty great um i wonder how well that would work with elementor i mean you could probably still have that there as a way to create you know setting settings pages in the admin 
um, for your content editors. Yeah, thanks for that. Good luck. Anything else, anyone's? Um, feel free to, like, if you've got questions and you've already asked one, feel free to ask another. We don't, it doesn't, we don't mind. Okay, I have another. Nice. I was hoping um, you were going to say that soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when you're learning, you have so many. Um, yeah. And of course, when I come to these, then I can't remember them all. So, but... Um, Philip has kind of brought up a thought I've had or a wonder is where where do people go to get, you know, get their hands dirty or, or you know, get suggested projects to work on that um, that can further your education in with ACF without just dreaming it up yourself, you know, so that there's somebody working along with you or that you know what the end result is and you figure out how to get there so it's on the education yeah I think there's a couple of things there we we have been uh, we haven't posted for a while but we were in a kind of a, a semi-regular rhythm of posting kind of case studies on the advancedcustomfields.com blog um, which sort of took an example from a, either a freelancer or a developer or an agency or whatever and and dug into how they use ACF to, to build their sites. And some of those are quite interesting. Some some like use blocks, some use um, maybe the flexible content field to kind of create a mini page builder within the, the, the admin for the site. And those are quite interesting just to, to understand like how people do things and try and follow along. We, we try and do screenshots and code snippets and stuff where possible. Um, and we probably need to do a few more. So, but I guess that we are doing more regular educational pieces like Damon's webinars we probably need to get some sort of list of the pre all the previous ones on the advanced custom field site so people can find those easily and revisit them um, but we are open to, to just hearing about you know challenges around is it a certain area that you're finding you would you want more education on or is it just even a ACF 101 kind of getting started what would be good content for us to help you guys? Um, so yeah, we 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 try and we do. I don't know if we actually post. We, we're quite active on Twitter as one place, but that isn't isn't the best way to keep up to date all the time. But we should probably post yeah. every webinar that Damon you're doing on the ACF blog in some ways, even if it's just a tiny write up on the blog, so we can like link to these things as an like a category index. Yeah, well, that's that's the other question I have. So I am no longer on Twitter. Um, I've been thinking about getting back on just so that I can get information from you guys. Yeah. But is there another avenue if people are not on Twitter to see we, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, we do have uh, an email list that if you're in the, um, where is it? If you could just go to the advancedcustomfields.com homepage, there's a footer. Mm -hmm. um, email sign up form and we will okay. we will email you about every plugin major plugin release not not the point releases but the, the major releases like 6.2 and 6.3 later on this year we'll email you about um new blog content um we'll we'll try and keep you up to date and we'll we'll, we'll try and make sure we email after every webinar we try and do sometimes emails to say this is an upcoming one come and join um so that's probably a place where we can keep up to you up to date uh, i will get on that and i will keep that um on my desktop so that i can see those yes thank you great yeah i was just trying to see if i can get a direct link to that but that's not not so easy on there um and obviously coming to chat fridays is quite helpful as well because as you can see, it's not sometimes it's busier than other times. Um, so if you if you get a, a, a good week where there's not many people, you can ask many questions. Exactly. So do will I be able to get the link to the Zoom, the Chat Friday um, 
off the email? Uh, um, actually, yeah, we don't typically email out, but we will. So this is the Chat Fridays page. Um, yeah, I wonder whether or not we should do that, Mike. Um, like, actually just email people and say, ne next week, in two weeks' time, there's a Chat Fridays. This is the registration link. Um, because it's probably, yeah. it would it'd be more helpful for us to, we did it when we first started and we got like a load of registrations and a load of attendees and it kind of fluctuates week in, week out or, you know, every, every other week. Um, yeah, but it might probably be a good idea. Yeah. Just start emailing on a regular cadence. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I, I was able to get this link from a friend who gets it from Twitter. So it was kind of a, a shared sort of thing, but I would like to be on a, on a normal receiving end of it. So I don't have to bug my friends to get me the link. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. maybe we should, maybe we should also just do a a specific email sign up on this so we don't it's it's hard, isn't it? Because you you people give us their email addresses, which is a sort of a privilege to have, but you don't want to spam them with everything we do, but you obviously want to give the information that we think is valuable. So yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. It's pretty much every other Friday, as Eric says. We're, we've been doing it for quite a while now, um, and I don't think we've we've maybe missed one or two just because of team holidays and whatnot. But yeah, we're pretty committed to doing this every other week going forward. So hopefully, hopefully, people get value from it. Great, thanks, uh, Philip. You've asked what's the advantage of ACF blocks versus Elementor. I think that's a hard question to answer because it's use the right tool for, for your um, use case. Like what's the tool that you're most familiar with? If you're been using Elementor for, for years and you can create a site very easily with Elementor, then I think that's a perfectly, that's the advantage there, right there. And you can build a site with it and you know that you, you know what you're going to get. I don't think Elementor is changing anytime soon with, you know, the block editor. So I think, yeah, they're just two ways of working. And if you if if you want to change, then maybe it's the a case of your clients say, Oh, I've heard about this WordPress block editor. I want to use the block editor. Then maybe that's when you think, I've changed my way of building. But I think, yeah, Elementor is a perfectly they both get the job done, right? They both create a website that renders the design that you desire. Um, it's just a slightly different editing experience for for the content editors. Sorry, that's a very political answer of just, it depends. I, I would ask a question back to you, Philip. Have you, have you looked at building sites with the block editor? How are you finding the way WordPress is with the block editor now and full site editing? Or have you just been heads down in Elementor? Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Starting from coding from scratch three years ago, then moving to Elementor. Yeah. I think then, you know, if it's something that you're, that you're using day in, day out, then it's Elementor and ACF work well together. It's just two tools to use to build websites. Um, so yeah, a ACF blocks is, it it's a good, good way for people to, to make their first forays into creating sites that use the block editor because creating a custom block to 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 do something that um that isn't offered by the native wordpress blocks is quite hard if you want to build a custom block with react you have to get into react developments and tooling around that to create this custom block that then allow your content editors to use that block but acf blocks is kind of more of a an acf way of doing things it's a bit of a bridge to creating blocks uh you just create a block.json file and you've got a php template which is your render whatever is in that template gets rendered out so that it from a from a 
get up and started point of view it's actually quite simple and you can accomplish quite a lot without having to shift to react Ah, but yeah, as you say, you've got some React JS and Next.js knowledge. You you may find that leap to the block editor and foresight editor and, and developing for it a bit easier. Um yeah, interesting. Thanks for the insight, Philip. Oh yeah, good shout, Damon. That's the link, the YouTube playlist. Yeah, every web event Damon does for DevRel for the WP Engine builders, because you do more than just ACF and the WP Engine builders does more than just ACF content. There's a load of headless content on there. There's a load of content about local as well, but that's a good playlist if we want to catch up with ACF stuff and we'll keep adding to that. But we probably should get that on the website in some shape or form. Cool, thanks, Philip. Thanks for joining. Anything else anyone wants to cover or ask? Well, I think we talked about, did we talk about what's upcoming? Well, yeah, well, last session we had a very blocks heavy feat, uh, session and we talked about what we're doing for 6.3, which is yeah the next major release that will be happening later this year. Very, very loose time frame there um we had a good chat this week liam and i about what what is that actually going into that release and it's we're hoping to tackle uh some of the some of the longer standing it not issues but challenges with creating blocks with acf and custom fields because there's validation that doesn't always happen in the block editor which we'll hopefully be fixing and we'll hopefully be giving people the choice of if they created an acf block to store the field data actually in post meta instead of in the post content which will make it easier to query and to um to do other things with and we're hoping just to make the whole experience of acf block using acf blocks as a content editor in the block editor look as 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 similar to native wordpress um, blocks as possible so yeah it's we want to try and make it easier for for developers to create sites that their content editors can just use seamlessly without having to think oh this is this is a different block now i need to do something different with this or uh, it works kind of differently to uh, native wordpress so yeah 6.3 is going to be a heavy block heavy block uh base release and probably it's a good time to also give another plug to this page this is our public feedback board for acf so this is a really good chance if we're talking about blocks and you're thinking oh i don't use blocks i love flexible content field but i wish it had x y and z this is the place you can go and suggest feature improvements you can suggest new features you can just tell us what you think acf needs and plus also everybody's in this, this is a public board so you can go and see other ideas that people have raised and vote on them comment on them give us as much insight as possible so we can um you know try and try and make acf as better as possible um, and, and get your voice heard basically. There's actually quite a few, quite a few ideas on there and quite a few, uh, quite a few votes on some things and we will keep that updated. So there was a, there was a feature that was tackled in 621 which was the um, allowing options page, child options pages to be um, created under other parent pages that weren't ACF pages. And we, we keep that board up to date. So you, that now is complete. And anyone who created that ticket and voted on that that post will get a uh, gets an email to say, we shipped it, shipped it in 6.2.1. Um, so that whole feedback loop is complete. So hopefully, yeah gives everybody kind of insight into what's happening. I think, yeah, I mean, feel free to ask another question, but if, we, if we've kind of 
got to the end, then I don't want to keep everyone's time any longer. We can wrap up. Um, so maybe last call for questions and then we can just wrap it up. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Thanks for coming as well. I hopefully see you again. I hope that's been useful. It's nice to it's nice to see familiar faces and it's nice to see new faces. So we appreciate that. All righty. Well, yeah, let's call it. We will see you in a couple of weeks. I hope everyone has a good weekend. Um, thanks very much for turning up. See you all later. Thanks, everyone.